All right, today we're gonna to compare the video and transmitter link quality of the new DJI system using this quad against our classic analog systems with FreeSky R9 using this quad. So one of the things I noticed when watching other reviews of the DJI HD system was that the anti-aliasing or the aliasing that you would see, so video breakup and just how it worked within tight metal environments or in other areas with video breakup wasn't the same. Of course you had the pixelation, but you had no static. And even the pixelation wasn't really that bad uh, in many of the environments and it really caught my eye. Whereas you've had quite a bit of static with the analog systems, you wouldn't have proportionately the same amount of digital breakup with the HD system. So after doing some research, it appears that the DJI system has an anti-interference digital transmission. It's basically like a two-way communication it's doing with the air unit between the goggles and maybe the transmitter. I'm not exactly sure how it works, but it's unique to this system. So I was really curious to see how it would perform against an analog system. We put both units to the extent of their range, essentially putting a lot of obstructions between myself and the quad. One of the toughest environments is just vegetation. Uh, leaves have a lot of water in them, so on and so forth, that breaks up radio waves. So that's easy access for me. We're gonna take an analog quad out to the extent of the range, and then we're gonna take the HD system out as well. Another thing that caught my eye was the transmitter low latency frame rates. DJI is touting a seven millisecond low latency frame rate from the transmitter to the air unit for controlling the quad. That's comparable against the Crossfire and R9 long range systems that also have a low latency transmission. There's some things though with the Crossfire and R9 that aren't ideal. So I was definitely interested in checking out DJI's low latency solution and seeing how it scored against the others. So we're gonna check that out at long range. We're gonna have the black box logs recorded where we can look at the RC frame rates and compare that against the R9 system that I have. So let's get started. Okay, so now we're gonna take the analog quad, has a one watt VTX on it, and I'm gonna make sure I'm pointing my eight DBI patch right over there. We're gonna take it out around the edge of the woods here and see how far we can get. You can see how much foliage there we're trying to get through. So let's see how she does. Okay, so the reception on that quad seemed pretty low. So I'm gonna try another quad with the antenna. I'll show the picture up here with the antenna sticking up much higher, uh, much clearer, and where this will be at uh, 500 milliwatts. So let's see how this does.
was much better than before, but the breakup was still quite a bit out there. So let's see how the DJI system does. Okay, so for this test, we're gonna have the DJI quad, DJI system, DJI goggles, and DJI transmitter. So let's fly it on out there, see what we get.
it's tough to argue that DJI did a lot better there. So let's take a look at the frame rates now for uh, transmitter frame rates on the analog system with my R9 versus the DJI system. Before getting into the details on how the DJI transmitter link quality performed, there's a couple things you need to understand about the current systems out there. Crossfire is, from what I've seen, the best so far. It maintains a consistent 6.67 millisecond frame rate to the flight controller when it's in low latency mode. That jumps up to about 20 to 25 milliseconds when it's in kind of long range mode. The only issue with Crossfire is that jump up between the 6.67 and the 20 to 25 milliseconds is that that long range isn't that long. It's usually within a racing track, so that's not that far, and there's no real obstructions in between. Now, from what I understand, Crossfire is coming up with a rate locking edition of its firmware, so we'll have to see how that performs. On the left hand side, you can see we have the Crossfire, and here jumped up to about 40 millisecond frame rates or about 25 hertz uh, right here in this section. Uh, the rest of it over here, this is 6 millisecond frames over here, so it jumps up. Uh, the flight controller recognizes this and switches up the, the smoothing interval for the RC, steps in the signal to 20 milliseconds, and then uh, after a little bit here, it jumps back down. This uh, log was done just on a racetrack. Now on the R9 system, it also has a 6.6 .6 millisecond frame rate. You can see right here, this is, a, you know, this would be a 6.67. It's just the decimal place is way out over here. But however, the R9 and anything that's FR Sky, even old FR Sky transmitters and receivers, as far as I can tell, this has been an issue for a long time, that they have kind of a heartbeat where the frame rate jumps from 6.6 .6 milliseconds or 9 milliseconds or 12 milliseconds, whatever the advertised frame rate is, up to double or triple that. So you can see every 200 milliseconds exactly this 6.6 .6 milliseconds will jump up to 12 milliseconds, sometimes 13, 18 milliseconds, and then it will jump back down. And these peaks here you can see are exactly 200 milliseconds apart. So that is also an inconsistency during flying. If you're doing a lot of sharp moves that, that jump up, that's going to give you an inconsistent feel during flight. For the DJI transmitter, there's really two modes that it can transmit on. One is just the standard SBUS, which is about a 10 millisecond frame rate. And that's what comes on by default and when you are in beta flight and just have SBUS selected and you're, when you're connecting the air unit. The other mode is called the DJI HDL mode. So in the DJI goggles, you would go into the settings menu and switch it to HDL mode. And then in beta flight, you would leave it on zero base receiver and SBUS, but you would come in to the CLI and you can type in get fast. And then you would set this USB baud fast equals and you would turn that to on. So I would type set, and I'm just going to paste this, and then turn this to on, hit enter, and type save, and enter. So now with the goggle set to DJI HDL mode, and that set to SBUS fast, then you would flip into the low latency mode for the transmitter on the DJI system. Now in that mode, you're running about 4 to 5 millisecond frames, and it varies. Obviously, the closer you are, if there's nothing in the way, then you're down to the four or five millisecond frame rates. As you go out farther, that can jump up. Now, comparing the DJI system to my R9 system, I only have R9, I don't have a crossfire. And looking at it when its plot is out in the field beyond the corner of those trees where it had the most breakup in the video, all the data is showing that either system kind of jumped up to the higher frame rates into the 20s, uh, depending on the quad's orientation and things of that nature. So you can see I have the DJI standard, the DJI low latency, and then the R9 here. The R9 has those, those heartbeats here. And looking at the data here, I would definitely say that uh, the DJI system is consistent with, with the pack. Uh, its low latency is definitely providing the lowest latency I've seen, even lower than the Crossfire. The Crossfire is getting down to 6.6 .6 milliseconds. The DJI system is getting down to 4 or 5 milliseconds. So it is delivering a low latency performance. Okay, so that is my first look at the DJI system. There will be more videos to come on it, of course, but uh, hopefully this has given you a good roundup on some of the signal performance you can expect to see from the systems, both through the goggles and through the transmitter. Thanks, everybody, and I hope this helped.